So both Joe and I are gonna try to pin each other against a wall in this kill house, but we have secret secondary objectives given to us by the cameraman here. First man, Digma. Mine is I'm gonna try to. But it's gonna be a fight, and he's got his own objectives. Joe, you ready? Ready? I don't think he's gonna voice it, cause then you'll know where he is. Oh, I'm gonna assume you're ready. Okay guys, quick time out for some quick acknowledgements before we get right back into this fight. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank Joe Apostol, who is a Filipino martial arts instructor right here in Toronto. He's been studying various systems of FMA for many, many years. Great friend of mine. Check him out. I'll put his info in the description. Second item, uh, the facility we were in is in the nation's capital of Canada in Ottawa. It's called the Tertia Training Center, run by the, I guess, the head of the PTTA in Canada. His name is Chris Mandigma. I'll put his contact information. Um, so the facility isn't really made for stick fighting. Um, this is a, a serious tactical training center. As you can see, like there's a, a phenomenal kill house that is modular. It can be expanded, contracted. The walls can be reinforced. Windows can be added. So um, if you're an agency dude looking for a place to train uh, up north here in Canada, please contact Chris Mandigma and the Tertia Training Center doing some amazing things. All right, so before we get right back into the second fight, I'm gonna show you the lead up fight. You'll notice some differences. One, we start off very, very slow. This is so that we can gauge each other's intention. So much of Filipino martial arts, you know, full contact stick fighting is really dependent upon the practitioners and their agreement. Full contact runs the gamut from full contact to full contact all the way to the ground. It is full contact, but you can see that our intention wasn't necessarily to hurt one another. In fact, definitely not to hurt one another, but just to provide enough resistance and impact force to make it really, really exhilarating. So we're gonna watch the second fight now. You can see, you should be able to see that we are communicating here. We start off really, really slow and light, and then we start pushing and pushing and pushing. So at the end of this intermission, this first fight, we said, wow, okay, now we have our language set. We understand what we can do, what we can't do. Um, there are some gray areas, but we'll figure it out as we go along, but never really wanting to hurt each other, just providing the right kind of resistance to really make this an exhilarating and super, super fun experience for the both of us. So here is the first fight, and then I'll see you again, where we'll pick it up to see how much more intense it got in the second fight. So here we go. Okay, so there you go. I hope you were able to see that we started off very, very light. We were sort of getting ourselves familiarized with the space. What can we do? Okay, these walls can't be crashed upon or certain walls can't be crashed upon that hard. Um, even though the facility is modular, they can totally be fortified, expanded, removed, whatever. Just like that? Damn. Yeah, it's more, it's more of a... I guess like what I like to say with so a lot of the agencies that come in, like they'll drive the need for what they need for uh, objective for their training. Yeah. So if they wanted something very specific or a solid wall or you know this particular panel or whatever, um, then everything will be prepared in advance. Because generally these guys are going to come in. They're not going to come in 
that day and say, this is what we need. I'll be asking them questions. Is this what you need well beforehand? Right. And then everything will be prepared for them when they come in on that. So day. walls can be fortified. They can be shifted and moved depending on the requirement of the agency. Yeah. So this is phase one of the CQB. And then uh, what we're working on is set in the second phase to actually have uh, movable walls on hinges to roll in and out and just to make things as quickly as possible um, and to make changes on the fly if we needed to so that it's uh, it doesn't waste or put right. in any downtime for training. Yeah, even that was really, really quick. That was like 30 seconds for you to get that wall back up. Yeah. Thanks, man. No problem, man. If you're on the more tactical side of things, whether you're operational or you're into the civilian side of security, or if you just really enjoy this kind of material, check out tricomtraining.com. If you want to learn the Filipino martial arts, check out Pikiti.university. There are many other ones out there, but I made a lot of the videos from Pikiti University, and I believe in the structure and the educational model of the platform and the system. So Pikiti University, if you want to learn uh, Filipino martial arts uh, and, and it can run the gamut like I said from art, history, culture, uh, technical, traditional, classical all the way to modern, progressive and combative. It all depends on the lens that you choose to place in front of your eyes while you digest this ancient and you know modern wisdom. So geez I talk a lot. Like I talk a lot. I'm sorry about that. Let's just let's just let's just forget about all forget forget about all that. Get it. I'm sorry I talked so much. Uh, I know what you guys are here for. So enjoy the video. Here it is. You fuck. <laughs> I oh, oh, oh. Oh. Are we objective but there's a, a large <coughs> brute force requirement at least from what I can see because yeah you know even then we were 
not going 100% with their punches. No, no, we're not. Not even close, but biggest takeaway for me is um, I, I still had my thought processes in the ground fight. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't the acting on just pure instinct. I yeah. had an objective. I was like, okay, I'm gonna hold him down. I can punch him, but I want my stick. So you were methodical. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far, but I was still thinking. And then you did that lock, and when I said, it was real. Oh, that's real, yeah. meaning I didn't mean to stop. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, that's a, that's a real defense against getting punched in the face. Like, it's bringing me in with that stick. Yeah. All right, guys, since I talked so much, I'm gonna keep this brief. I wanna say thanks to Joe. I wanna say thanks to Chris. Y'all know where to find them. Y'all know where to find me. Thank you for your support. One love, keep fighting, have fun, explore the art, history, culture, and the combative application. Oh yeah, don't forget sport of whatever martial art you choose to do. And that could be a firearm based martial art. I mean, hey, mm, crazy, right? I totally think it's possible. I totally think it exists. And I totally think that there are a lot of great living individuals who exemplify that the martial arts does include tactical firearms, all helicopters, jet fighters, as well as katas. You know, it really runs the gamut. I know I said I wasn't gonna talk a lot. Dang it. Thanks for watching Funker Tactical. Thanks for watching Aperture Fight Focus. My name is GN. Thank you guys for your support. Peace. Oh.